This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is The Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy Liz Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your Liz Building Lifestyle. Yes, yes, y'all. This is another edition of List Building Lifestyle, bringing you what you need to build your list, build your lifestyle, and be free. I have with me here Mr. Igor Kfetz. What is up, my man? What's up, John? What's up, List Builders? Are you ready for another kick-ass episode? I am ready, but I'm going to read a review. So let's jump back into the vault of reviews since we've gotten so many. I I think people like you, Igor. I'm starting to think people like you. You know, it's weird because no one likes me in real life. (laughs) They don't really know you, do they? They just get the outside, Igor. (laughs) Yeah, never open up. Okay, so here we go. This one comes from, well, there's no name. It says, join Eminem. And the title is, exceeds my already high expectations. And here's what they write. I knew this was going to be good because Igor is so successful, but it has been transformative and eye-opening for me. I love his candor. It is a refreshing change from being in a company where the primary teacher spoke in riddles. I don't know what company that was, but... uh, Every company, Jonathan. That's what they do in every company. (laughs) They speak in riddles, how to keep you confused and dependent on them. That's right. Cool, man. So what do you have in store for us today, Igor? Well, first, I wanted to thank uh, the, the person who wrote that review. Appreciate it. You know, do my best to keep the, keep, keep the bar up. And today, I want to talk about the, the gateway to the list, to your list, right? The, the landing page. I don't think we ever have done an episode on the, on the landing page. God, I spent like my first two years online obsessed with landing pages yeah me too i used to like split test them like crazy completely ignoring the fact that all that matters is sales actually not the opt-in rate but but you know it's just you live and learn and the the best way to learn is, is through experience so today i think it's time we discuss what's better a generic company squeeze page or a custom landing page which you create yourself so what do you think john well, I'm I'm probably biased, or maybe it's just that I come from a technical background, but I usually like to create my own. Yep, yep. But it's not it's not a guaranteed set in stone kind of thing. Sometimes a company landing page does convert pretty well. It really depends who's the owner of the company. You know, sometimes the owners of the company are so oblivious to marketing and to the marketing to the basic marketing copywriting principles that they create just horrible landing pages, ridiculously heavy. Uh, design heavy, right? But very poor and direct response marketing principles. On the other hand, sometimes every now and again, you know, you'll get you'll get a company lander that actually looks pretty good, and it makes sense too, because the person who owns the company, who started the company, actually gets marketing. So you can tell, you know, the, what kind of books they were reading and and which kind of seminars they went to. But it it is rare, very very rare. Igor. I'm going to interrupt your flow because I feel like you mentioned something that we haven't talked enough about. You said direct response principles. What is direct response? Oh, right. Well, direct response is when you market either one to one or one to many, and you're trying to elicit a response, one specific response. So if you ever gotten a sales page or a sales video which tries to elicit just one response from you that is to buy the damn product that's direct response sales video or sales letter a landing page is actually direct response mechanism with one purpose in mind and that is to squeeze your email a um a catalog of some sort it's a direct response mechanism that tries to get you to dial the home shopping network or whatever like the, the you know the salespeople so they can sell you whatever it is that there is in the catalog so anything when it comes to marketing material that tries to elicit a direct response from the reader or listener or viewer is called a direct response advertising mechanism and direct Thank response you. in general simply means the science 
which is advertising, right? Because we've all seen these TV commercials that are all about brands like Coca-Cola and McDonald's, right? They don't really tell you, go to your local McDonald's branch and buy this burger, right? They just give you pictures and images and they want you to remember what McDonald's is. And next time you walk past a yellow looking M, you kind of want to get a burger. However, these are just well, I don't like these kind of ads because they're useless, right? Because they cost too much money and they can't really be measured. Like the response of those ads cannot be measured. So anything that you can measure with actual sales, opt-in rates, percentages, etc., that's direct response advertising. So when we advertise online, solo ads, Facebook ads, Google SEO, Google AdWords, all of these are direct response advertising channels which you should be using because, let's face it, you're not stupid. You want your advertising dollars to actually produce results. And for that to happen, you first got to track that response and adjust accordingly. So that's my very short and very non-confusing way of explaining what direct response is. Thank you. Thank you for that. I wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Great. And now I forgot what I was talking about before you interrupted me. <laughs> well, because one of the, th the connections there that I wanted you to make was that why were those landing pages bad? And so the ones that are not performing so well are more like those McDonald's pages where they're branded about the company, where the ones that are good are more of those ones that are trying to get your email more than they are trying to show off their product or how nice their design is. Oh yeah, in fact, oftentimes my split testing shows that ugly landing pages outperform pretty ones. So heavy design is actually not a good thing for a landing page, at least in the make money online space. That's right. Ugly, uh, I think it's Ken McCarthy who says ugly almost always wins. And so even though I would like prettier stuff, I, I tend to lean towards the ugly stuff myself. Don't tell my wife that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was just about to make that reference myself, so you beat me to it, man. <laughs> anyway, anyway, circling back to landing pages, when it comes to landing pages, a custom designed landing page by someone who knows what they're doing, like yourself, for example, Jonathan, who understands the at least the basics of direct response marketing, will outperform the generic company squeeze page, which oftentimes is created by idiots. I mean, I'll just be honest. I mean, a lot of times I see pages created by idiots and dumbasses who do not understand a thing about what marketing really is. And incidentally, the custom squeeze pages will also lead to higher sales conversions. Really? Yeah. And I can't explain why. Like, you take the exact same sales letter with the exact same pitch, with the exact same credibility, etc., and you place it after an ugly-looking custom landing page that just follows the basic direct response principles. Almost every single time, this page, anyone who goes through that page is more likely to purchase than anyone who goes to a generic company page. Why? Uh, I just don't know. I just know that you better use a custom lender. You know what, Igor? I think it has to do with congruency. Because if you're doing direct response principles on that lander, then you're already doing your positioning for the offer that's coming behind it. That, and perhaps by, by pressing the right buttons, you also put them in state that too might be a possibility, right? Because in order for, for a prospect to purchase a membership into a business opportunity, they have to be in a heightened state of mind. They have to be in a different state of mind than just being curious or just being curious and skeptical at the same time. They have to be open, right, to, have to, to that internal conversation about whether or not should they make a buying decision right now. So we just finished a campaign, for example, for someone who ran uh, 300 clicks to a digital altitude sales funnel with our landing page because we actually built landing pages for our clients for free when they order traffic with us and guarantee 30% opt-in rate. And lo and behold, he received six sales. Now, wow. and out of about 50% opt-in rate, which is 150 opt-ins, six sales means one sale per 25 visit opt-ins. And... Here's, here's the thing. He never made sales before, ever. Really? Yeah. Not, not until he ran traffic with us. Now, I don't know if it's my traffic or it's the landing page or a combination of both. Point is, these are the circumstances that led to him finally getting his business off the ground. He must love you. <laughs> well, you know, you know I, I wish. However, as you know, Jonathan, clients can be 
weird sometimes. And you know what this guy wrote to us? He says, hey, how come I only got six sales? What? I'm like, you know, obviously I want to write to him, dude, go talk to your, you know, fellow members and see how many sales they've gotten from solo ads they ran with other people. You know, more often than not, it's like, oh, I'm getting really pathetic 7% opt-in rate and no sales at all and my list is dead, you know? But it, I guess it's all a matter of perspective and, you know, this client needs to be educated a little bit. Well, he never made sales before, so he also has a list, right? Because it was your squeeze page, so he has a list to follow up with as well, doesn't he? Absolutely, but then again, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And uh, many times, even before we go into the conversation of whether or not someone should run traffic with us, we try to identify where these people are in their journey, right? Do they even understand what a list is? Do they understand that they're not supposed to make like a gazillion dollars as soon as they run the ad? Do they understand that they got to follow up, right? And all these things sometimes we take for granted, but oftentimes people who come by traffic don't even understand that because no one teaches them that stuff. I remember last uh, or episode before last, I think we discussed how people get keys to a Ferrari, but no one shows them how to drive it. Yeah. Well, that's exactly the case, Jonathan, where they got a great system, they got great traffic, they even make sales, but even then they're frustrated and overwhelmed and confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to expect. They're not, they don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing when they make six sales from a 300 click run. Good grief, man. If they don't, well, that's the thing. He's new. And so he's never done this before. He needs, he needs to get kicked in the nuts once or twice, and then he'll see how great this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably should invite him to become a member of my VIP club, but uh, not until he listens to a few episodes of this podcast, you know, to get educated. Yeah, yeah. So can you give us, not not giving away all your secret sauce or anything like that, but give us some basic pointers on what a good lander might include? Well, uh, landing pages are really simple, actually. It, it all comes down to the headline. Honestly, if you got a clean looking, ugly design, even a plain white background if you want, and just a good, targeted, hard hitting headline that gets the job done. That's about 80% of the success of your landing page. If you got a great headline, then it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna get a really high opt-in rate. This is like the big secret. Like if there's an 80-20 rule, uh, the the Perry Marshall, right? The Pareto principle. Yeah. Then the headline is the 80% of a squeeze page. And it really has to drive the point home, drive the big benefit or the big idea home for the reader. So within a glance, within just like a 1.7 second glance over that page, he knows or she knows, do I proceed or do I leave the page? Is this relevant for me? Do I want to know more about this or can I just leave and forget about it? Now, I'm going to push a little bit more here. So a lot of people will put pressure on themselves sitting there trying to come up with this wonderful headline. But where where do you get the inspiration for the headline? Where, do, where does that come from? Well, for one, Jonathan, I read a ton of copywriting books. So that's a no-brainer. I read almost everything by Dan Kennedy, Gary Helbert, and anyone who's considered to be an authority in direct response space. And if you read enough books, you won't have trouble coming up with a headline because you'll realize that it's all that it's all about what the prospect wants. It's about the fantasy the prospect has and giving them this fantasy. Now, sometimes the challenge is how do you state something that's already been stated a million times before in a way that's still inviting. And this is where the experience com comes through. But if you don't have the experience and you don't have the time to read a ton of books, then the very least, you can go into your marketplace and you can study, you can examine uh, the high-performing letters, the high-performing sales videos. Anything that you know is converting really well right now, you know, just create a swipe file of winning ads and winning sales letters, go through them one after the other as if you're trying to compare them side by side. And within 30 minutes, you'll have at least a dozen headlines you could use simply because you kind of just started consuming all the great marketing out there and naturally your brain starts pumping this stuff up. What about going into the actual sales material? So we talked a little bit about congruency and on the other end of that opt-in there's got to be some sales material. You think you can dig into that stuff as well and find something that could be a winner? That is one of the shortcuts, yes. I'm not a big fan though. For some reason I don't like doing that because everyone does it. Uh, so I prefer to feed my brain, give it like lots and lots of content. H however, let it come up with a unique angle. Because again, copywriting, one of the challenges is stating the same thing in a different way. 
because right. because the customer is like a rich person in a, in a club full of poor people where all the poor people try to come in and, and take their money, right? So you have to approach the client, you have to show up and seem different. And the first thing you're going to, well, use to judge you, right, is your headline. Does this sound like exactly the same thing I've seen a million times before? And if it does, you're automatically disqualified. But then again, if you're brand new to this business, you, you do have not a shortcut. You can just ask us to build you a page when you buy traffic and have us just commit to a 30% opt-in rate. I mean, that's that's been uh, pretty much the, the simplest, the fastest way to go about it. However, if you want to do it on your own, then do it right, okay? And start reading, start consuming great marketing. And before you know it, your brain will just pump up ideas like crazy. So how many people in your industry actually commit to those kind of opt-in rates? Is that a normal thing, Igor? No, not many at all. In fact, most traffic sources never guarantee their traffic in any way. So we actually were the very first ones to ever offer this. And we had a few other competitors knock this off of us. Uh, however, you definitely want to work with people who are willing to stand behind their product. So whether it's us or anyone else who is willing to guarantee, as long as they're legit, their word can be trusted. By all means, don't go risking your hard-earned dollars if you have a chance to run advertising risk-free. And you know what, Jonathan? The best part is that Facebook doesn't guarantee anything. Google AdWords doesn't guarantee anything. No one guarantees anything but guys like us who actually want to see you succeed. There it goes. I think we read a review somewhere where they were talking about how you actually care. What's wrong with you, Igor? You're supposed to be an internet marketer. What are you doing with all this caring stuff? Well, I know I've got this problem, but I'm getting surgery next week, so <laughs> you know, we should solve that. You know, you know how this movie, uh, something to do with orange, like... Color, uh, where the guy gets his aggressive gene removed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, why can't I think? I know it's like a 1970s movie, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like a mechanical orange or something. Clockwork orange. Clockwork orange, that's it. And uh, I never seen this movie, but my friend's a big fan. And he just spoke about it for so often that I just, I have this image in my head where the guy who was really, really aggressive and who I think went to prison or something, they removed his aggressive gene. And uh, like, so I'm going to get my caring gene removed next week for sure. <laughs> so then what do you have in store for us next time, Igor, once your caring gene has been removed? Well, surprisingly, I'm, I'm hosting a guest, a very special guest whose world world's number one hypnotist. His name is Marshall Silver, and it was not easy to get him to do an interview. However, he is one of the best influencers I know. Like, the guy is incredible. He's got his own show in Vegas. He holds uh, super expensive masterminds in Vegas as well. He lives in a freaking palace, like a 50 million or 20 million home or something like that. He flies private only. He drives a, like a golden Rolls Royce or something. Like, look him up, Marshall Silver. He's just insane the guys like a you know the midas king like whatever he touches turns into gold so it was really really fun to interview him and i can't wait to share this with with the list builders yes sir i've seen him hypnotize a stage full of people and have them acting like uh, farm animals he's an interesting fellow so looking forward to that so that is a wrap for another edition of list building lifestyle we will be back in your brains next time Thank you for listening to the List Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.